Hi and welcome to surface area of prisms and cylinders. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a note shot revealed for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so we're going to try and first of all find the surface area of this triangular prism. Um, and in order to do this, we need to first of all think about what would be the surfaces or the faces of this shape. Well, obviously we have a triangle at the front, which has a height of 3 and a base of 4. We also have to recognise that there would be the same shape at the back. So we'd have two triangles in this shape. Then we have to think about the faces at the bottom and at the back um, and the one that is coming across the top here. So the one across the bottom is a rectangle. It is a rectangle with a width of 6 and a height of 4. That gives us the bottom of the shape. The back of the shape is another rectangle, but this one's a little bit thinner because this one is six along and three up. And then finally, we have another rectangle, the one I'm now colouring in red. And this one has a width of six, just like the others, because it's all based on this, uh, this depth of the shape. But then we need to know the height of that shape and currently that is not marked on the diagram and the reason it's not marked is because this is a right angle triangle now if it's a right angle triangle we can calculate this length using a little bit of pythagoras and so pythagoras would state that we do three squared and we add four squared and we square root the answer so three squared is nine 4 squared is 16, so it's the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. And so this length here is actually 5. And so if we want to get the total surface area, all we need to do is find the area of the 5 surfaces. And so the first one, 5 times 6, well 5 times 6 is 30. If we go to the back of the shape, it will be 3 times 6, it will be 18. If we go to the base of the shape, it'll be 4 times 6 is 24. And then the triangles, we just need to remember that a triangle is half times base times height. So half times 3 times 4, well that is 6, and it's the same for the other one. So the total surface area, we want to add all of those numbers together. So 30 plus 6 plus 6 plus 24 plus 18. And if we do that, 30 plus 6 is 36. Plus 6 is 42, 66, 74, 84 centimetres squared. And very importantly there, just because it is a 3D shape does not make it cubed. We are talking about surface area, and so it is in centimetres squared. So let's do the same for the next triangular prism. Can we find the area of this shape, uh, the surface area? So first thing we need to remember, once again, we have... A triangle at the front it has a, a base of six and it has a height of four as shown here and that would also be repeated at the back of the diagram so six with a height of four and then we need some rectangles well we know the base of the uh, shape is going to be a six by eight rectangle and then we need to think about again the front of the shape and the back which is going to be the same as it um, but in this case again we don't actually know the height of that rectangle we only know that it is eight long how would we actually work that out well it comes again down to a little bit of Pythagoras if we deal with the triangle we've been given if I split that triangle in half it is a right angle triangle it originally the full triangle has a base of 6, so if I cut it in half, this is only now 3, and the height of the triangle was 4. So how am I going to get this length here? Well, again, it's a bit of Pythagoras. We'd do 3 squared, and we'd add 4 squared, but we'd want the square root. And so 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. Let's take the square root. Square root 25 is 5. And so again, actually, in this case, we have the same size it is five centimeters but we have to be careful here we've only actually got four shapes drawn so far we need to remember that the back of the shape is going to be the same as the front and so that is going to be five 
and 8. And so let's work out each of our areas. The triangles is a half base times height, so a half of 6 times 4 is 12. It's going to be the same for the other triangle. 6 times 8 is 48. 5 times 8 is 40. And for the final one, 5 times 8 again is also 40. So if we add all of those together, 40 plus 40 is 80. Plus 48 is 128. Plus 12 is um, 140. And plus another 12 is 152 centimetres squared. So next we're going to look at an L-shaped prism um, and just have a look at how we're going to get the area of this shape. So the first thing I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to deal with the fact that we've got quite a few missing values in terms of the lengths in this diagram. And that comes from the fact that we don't know this length here and here. And also we don't currently know this length here and this length here. They're obviously going to be pairs of the same size, but we need to work out what they would be. And so in terms of the height, we know that the total height of the shape is six centimetres and that we've already used four centimetres of that. And so what it tells me is that this one, to make up the full six centimetres, must be two centimetres long. In terms of the width, we know that it is seven centimetres in total, but we've used three of them. And so the remaining, um, remaining width must be four centimeters so now that we've got that we've actually got all the information we need in order to work out the area of the surface area of the prism but again we need to think about what the different surfaces would be well i would have the l shape at the front and the l shape at the back and then if we think about the number of rectangles we're going to see well there's going to be a rectangle at the very back of this shape and that is going to be six centimeters high and 11 centimeters long and so that is the back of the shape if we keep working around clockwise around the shape we then want this rectangle and so this rectangle we know is three centimeters by 11 and then if we move on to the next rectangle well that is two centimeters by 11 and then if we keep going, the next one, well, that is four centimeters by 11. And if we come to the front, that is another four centimeters by 11. And the one thing that we haven't taken into account yet is the very bottom of the shape. And so finally, we would then have an 11 centimeters by seven centimeters rectangle. And so, how do we find the area of this shape, the L shape? Well, the first thing is, we just want to split it into two pieces. So the first piece is six by three, and the other piece, now that we've found out the different lengths, it's four by four. And so six times three is 18, four times four is 16. And so the total area of that piece is actually 34. That's going to be the same for the back. And then in terms of the um, rectangles, 6 times 11, 66, 3 times 11, 33, 2 times 11, 22, 4 times 11, 44, and at the bottom, 4 times 11, 44, 7 times 11, 77. We have a lot of pieces to put together here. Um, so what we've got is 77 plus 44 plus 44, plus 22, plus 33, plus 66, and plus 34, plus 34. If we add all of those together, 7 plus 4 is 11, 15, 17, 20, 26, 3 plus 7 is 10, 14, 18, 20, 23, 29, 32, 35. And so we have 358 centimetres squared as the total surface area. 
and we're going to finish with uh, looking at the surface area of cylinders and I'm beginning with a tin of beans because it helps actually um, just to demonstrate what the surface area of a um, of a cylinder actually looks like um, because if you think about your tin of beans the label wraps all the way around the outside of that tin now if you unwrapped the label what you would actually see is a shape like this you would see a rectangle and that is because the uh, curved surface area of a uh, cylinder is actually a rectangle it's just being folded around in order to make that cylinder shape and so what we need to think is well how wide would that rectangle have to be well if that rectangle is going to wrap all the way around the outside of a circle well, that means it is the same length as the circumference. And so the circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. And so we need to do pi times the diameter in order to find the length of the rectangle, which would make up the cylinder. Now, on top of that, if you were to unpeel the uh, lid of a tin of beans and the base of a tin of beans, you would find that it is a circle. And so we would have a circle at the bottom and we would have a circle at the top and so both of those parts are the area of a circle so pi r squared and pi r squared for the two circular circular parts so let's have a go at that for this particular tin of beans so first of all if i'm dealing with the circular lid i need pi r squared well that means i need the radius and the radius is going to be half of the diameter so half of 7.5 is 3 0.75 and so i'm going to have to find the area of that shape by doing pi times 3.75 squared and so for that i'll grab my calculator and it's going to be pi times 3.75 squared and if i do that i get 225 over 16 pi and actually at this point it might be worth keeping it as that answer because we're going to end up adding together a few different values. So let's say 225 over 16 pi. That is one of the circles. So obviously I'll need two of those in terms of in the final working out. And then the rectangular part, the basically the label on your cylinder. Well, the height of it is still going to be the height of the tin. So 11 centimeters. But the width of this rectangle, well, that is going to be the diameter of the uh, of the circle. And so that is going to be pi times the diameter. The diameter in this case is 7.5. And so the area of the rectangular piece, well, that is going to be pi times 7.5 and then times it by the height of the rectangle, 11. So 165 over 2. pi and so if i need the total surface area well i need the area of the two circles and the area of the rectangle added together and so i'm just going to add those two things together on my calculator so i've already got the 165 over 2 pi so i'll add and i'll put this in brackets two times 225 over 16 shift pi and if I press equals, I get 885 over 8 pi. But let's use this as a decimal. Let's go with SD 347.54. So 347.54 centimetres squared. That would be the surface area of the cylinder. We'll try it again for this cylinder. It has a radius of four centimeters and a height of eight. Just because the shape has been tipped over, it doesn't change anything about how we work it out. And so again, I'm going to begin with the circle, the circle with a radius of four. So that would be pi times four squared, which is 16 pi. That is one circle. Obviously I would need two of those. And then the rectangle well, again, the rectangle in this case has a height of 8 and the length around the outside, that is going to be the diameter of the, uh, sorry, the circumference of the circle. So it's going to be pi times 8. And so pi times 8 times 8, well, that is actually going to be 64 pi. And so then I want to add all of those together. So 64 pi plus 
16 pi and plus 16 pi. Well, if I add those together, 64 plus 16, that is 80, and then another 16, so I've got 96 pi. Now, on uh, some exams, you may actually just be asked to do this in a non-calculated paper, and so 96 pi will be the exact answer. But if it's a calculator paper, then you're going to want to actually work out what 96 pi is, and it's going to come to 301.59. So 301.59 centimetres squared. And so we end with the exam question. This came from the Edexcel IGCSE Higher Calculator paper. Um, and it said that the diagram shows a solid cylinder. The cylinder has a height of 30 centimetres and a radius of 11 centimetres. Work out the total surface area of the cylinder. Give your answer correct to two significant figures. Now, this word here, total, is very important. Total surface area will mean the circle at the top the rectangle that goes around the uh, around the outside and the circle which is at the bottom if it just said curved surface area we'd only actually be dealing with this piece here but because we want the total we want all three pieces together and so the circle well that is going to be pi times r squared so pi times 11 squared and so that is actually 121 pi that's going to be the same for both circles, so 121 pi in both cases. In terms of the rectangle, well, that's going to have a height of 30, but then the width is going to be pi times diameter. So this is the radius. We need to double that to find the diameter. So that's pi times 22. Um, and so that is 660 pi. And so all I want to do now is add all three of those parts together. So 660 pi plus 121 pi plus 121 pi. And we can do that on a calculator. So 660 plus 121 plus 121. Sorry, let's multiply. Plus 121. That is 902 pi. So let's times that by pi. 902 pi which is the same as 2833.71 2833.7 I actually think that was 72 it would have been but it says two significant figures and so when we are rounding here what we actually need to think about is we need to round it at this point after the eight our second significant figure and so we are actually looking at 2,800 centimetres squared.